Affinity Photo isn't the first photo editing program to claim it can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Adobe Photoshop for a fraction of the price, boasting unique features like a savable undo history and PSD import and exporting options. And with just a one-time affordable fee, it can be much more financially appealing than Photoshop's monthly subscription plan, where you're basically just renting it out. But can a program really be just as powerful at only a fraction of the price? And even still, can it manage to pull away from the user base of a program that has been around for 20 plus years? Well, I think maybe so. And I have eight reasons that might just convince you as well. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's get right into it. But first, all of the images we'll be using today can be found and downloaded on EnvatoElements.com. Envato Elements is my go-to place for stock photos, fonts, graphics, and even music and sound effects. It's your one-stop shop for creative assets made by and for creative people. All of today's resources can be found in the description below. First, a familiar user interface. The first thing most people might notice when they open up Affinity Photo is just how similar it looks to Photoshop, which is a huge plus. Affinity Photo decided to streamline and improve what we already have and know instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, which would force you to start straight from scratch. You will see similar features like a choice of light and dark UI, customizable toolbars and tabs, and a massive library of fully customizable keyboard shortcuts. And when I say fully customizable, I mean fully customizable. Absolutely everything can be rearranged and set up to your specific liking. So, as someone who is incredibly picky about how my interface and tools are set up, I put Infinity Photo to the test, seeing if I can recreate my Photoshop setup in Affinity Photo. And I got pretty impressively close to making an almost one-for-one -one recreation of my preferred workstation. Everything is as simple as clicking and dragging or going into the View drop-down menu. There are some cons, however. While similar, they are by no means the same, so you may find yourself continually looking for a tool in the wrong area or expecting to see a filter here, but instead it's over there. But really, this is an inconvenience that comes with learning any new program and of course is not specific to Affinity Photo. Two, retouching corrections and adjustment tools. Given that Affinity Photo has all the power of Photoshop with a lot less of the bulk, photo retouchers would be wise to give Affinity Photo an extra glance. It contains all the tools you'll need to do high-end retouching, including dodging and burning, frequency separation, healing, and of course, the all-powerful liquify tool. What about color corrections and adjustment layers? Affinity Photo covers all their bases, including everything Photoshop has to offer and more. My personal favorite Affinity Photo specific adjustment layer is the split toning adjustment layer, allowing you to create two-toned colored images in a matter of seconds. And of course, all layer adjustments, layer modes, and layer effects have real-time effects, as you adjust the properties of a filter, you always see a full resolution preview of the result in real time. Three, compositions and creative editing tools. But maybe you go a little beyond the more usual retouching route. Compositing, mixed media, and matte painting, for instance, all require heavy duty tools for a completely transformative effect. And I'm pleased to say Affinity Photo has you covered as well. As I mentioned earlier, Affinity Photo provides an impressive library of adjustment layers, layer effects, and live filter layers. And of course, all of these can be grouped, clipped, masked, or blended together to enable the creation of incredibly complex image composites. And you can't mention photo manipulation without taking a very close look at a program's ability to create selections and extract images from their backgrounds. So how does AP hold up? Surprisingly, great. Affinity Photo's advanced selection refinement algorithms work hard, so you can spend more time creating and less time hand-selecting every single little strand of hair. Whether it's cutting out objects, creating masks, or selectively applying adjustments, your selections will come out extremely precise. 4. The Brushes So what about you digital painters out there? I'm happy to say I actually prefer Affinity Photo's brush field to Photoshop's. It works amazingly with my Wacom Intuos, meaning yes, they offer support for all major graphic tablets and supports pressure sensitivity with brush stabilization for super smooth brushwork. And just like Photoshop, Affinity Photo comes equipped with 120 professionally designed brushes, including effects, bristles, dry media, inks, markers, and paint. 
Have your own library of meticulously curated and sorted brushes? Same. Bring them right into Affinity Photo. They import seamlessly, grouped, and all, which makes this brush hoarder very happy. 5. Macros and Savable Undo History and Brush By now, most of us have at least a couple of go-to actions that make our workflow less horribly mundane and repetitive, to put it lightly. With the idea of losing these actions being enough to keep us tethered to Photoshop forever. Never fear, however, because Affinity Photo indeed has recordable macros. Working just like actions, you can save and replay them whenever you like. But to a more unique feature specific to Affinity Photo, Affinity Photo has a savable undo history, which is so obvious yet so genius. It's never been a feature I realized I didn't have until Affinity Photo gave it to me. And I was like, whoa, I can't believe Photoshop has never had this. And alongside the savable undo history, they also have an undo brush, allowing you to brush specific areas of your work back to a previous stage without having to undo the whole effect, which is of course always handy. Six. Dedicated Raw Workspace Editing your photos in camera raw is the first step for almost any photographer, retoucher, or compositor. So, you will all be happy to hear that Affinity Photo indeed does have a dedicated workspace with all the adjustments and corrections you need. It also supports both EXIF and metadata, keeping all information intact. Along with its own raw workspace, Affinity Photo also supports HDR merge with tone mapping, allowing you to merge straight from RAW, also providing automatic alignment and unlimited source images. Perfect for all you HDR fanatics out there, which I know there are many. 7. Cross-Platform and Mobile Affinity Photo is available for both Windows and Mac iOS, as to be expected, but is still appreciated. What is really worth noting is that it is also available for iPad, and has been for a while now, even being crowned as Apple's best iPad app of 2017. Always up to date so that it works perfectly with the latest iPad and Apple Pencil technology, it offers the full power of Affinity Photo, not a wimpy watered-down version. This even includes PSD importing. And they stay true to their no-subscription model, with a one-time low fee to get full access to the app. PSD import, export, Finally, like the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae, you can both export and import PSDs straight into Affinity Photo. So even if you are in the middle of a big edit, you don't have to worry about completely starting over. Importing is as easy as dragging and dropping your PSD into Affinity Photo, and it'll do its best to keep it as intact as possible. And to its credit, it does a very good job at it. And it's the same with exporting. You simply go to File, Export, PSD, and choose that you want to preserve editability, allowing you to continue working on the file in Photoshop. Let's say you have Affinity Photo here, but Photoshop at your work, not a problem. Support for Photoshop plugins, and as I mentioned earlier, ABR brush files are also included, meaning a big bulk of your Photoshop resources will quickly transfer over to Affinity Photo. No need to go resource hunting. There are some cons here as well, however. While all layers will be preserved and visually appear in Photoshop, adjustment layers don't seem to always convert all that well, which may be frustrating at first, but it's also pretty expected. Even with their similarities, these are still two different programs, so I can't fault it too much. So now we have to ask ourselves, should you switch to Affinity Photo? Possibly. Honestly, it all depends on your specific needs, workflow, and budget. It is, however, a fabulous alternative to Photoshop, being incredibly affordable, easy to learn if you're a beginner, and an easy transition if you are a longtime advanced Photoshop user. Even now, Affinity Photo is upgrading, improving, and providing steady updates. There's no reason to think that one day Affinity Photo might just be the next industry standard. And considering I did happen to notice a few of the changes in Photoshop's big 2019 update happened to be features Affinity Photo was offering first and already, I have a feeling Photoshop just may have taken notice of that potential as well. Let me know what you think of Affinity Photo's potential and the future of photo editing down in the comments below. Do you think Affinity Photo is ready to take on Photoshop? If you like this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget, click the little bell to be notified of any new exciting videos. If you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other wonderful tutorials that Tuts Plus has to offer. 
I'm Abby Esparza. See you next time.